Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. We're going to talk all the big NFL news, including Lamar Jackson's situation. And uh, we're going to jump into the mailbag and cover a whole lot of stuff to help you win your league. Don't miss a minute. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Roar! <laughs> Welcome in! I just let, you know, our good friend Jay Grizz take care of the welcome. I don't think he really did a good job, if I'm being honest. How dare you? Cardboard bear extraordinaire holds it down. Yeah, I, we, we have a two-man show today. Mike and I are here. And the bear. And the deucers. And, oh yeah. One of which is having a birthday similar to your birthday. Yes. Yeah. Look at that. Happy birthday. Yay. Owl. Thank you. Thank you. Old. Yeah, I know you are. 40. <laughs> yeah. You already <laughs> felt old, but you look it now. Thank you. How's it going? Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, he looks better great. yesterday. You yeah. look great, Al. Thank you, oh, Brooks. Yeah, get out of here, Brooks. Classic deucer support. Yeah, what's that all about? Coming in from Brooksy. Uh, I, I thought we did a good job of turning you all against each other. No, that, we didn't. Oh. They stick together. They have to uh, withstand all of our trouble, uh, troubling comments. Um, Jason would normally be here, obviously, but he is out there, from my understanding, uh, he is searching for. Uh, oh no! His, oh no! He's trying to find a niche. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, Boston. at some point in time, maybe if he works really hard, oh man, he can find the niche that's yes. right for him. Look, uh, you should follow us on social media, everybody. Yeah, Jason. Because <laughs> because if you don't, you miss some good times. Yeah, Jason is just he's good at giving advice. <laughs> Uh, um, and you know, connect with other people in the industry, be a delightful person. And then there's other things you can do to yeah. become successful. Yeah. And so Jason shared that on social media in the middle of his AMA. So check that out, but hopefully he'll spell and say spelling was it, not one know, of those. And then getting auto corrected and not noticing because your spelling was so atrocious. Okay. Let's be more begin. transparent. Then. Sure. Because the problem was the spelling. Yes, it was. It's like it, it was two steps down the <laughs> stairs he, that he fell. Because he was trying to give some... He had an AMA. You know, he's he's had a busy couple of days, had some downtime, went on Twitter, did an AMA. Someone asked him how to be successful in the podcast industry. He's just trying to share some good advice. Yeah. But yeah. what let him down was his education. <laughs> and um, And so he was saying, find your niche. But then he chose to spell that N I T C H. Oh, not, uh -oh. not N I C H E. Uh, ipso facto. Yeah, things little, went south. Little auto correction and uh, not the advice I expected. But everybody's got different advice on how to yeah. succeed, and he has his. Apparently, his is being a big potty mouth. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was that was entertaining. We got a great show for you today. Hitting the mailbag. Uh, we've got some NFL news. Uh, quick, yeah, we do. A good quick question. Yeah, there's a lot that's been going on. Ooh, ooh, yeah, I just thought of another piece of that news we get to talk about. So uh, here at the top, I want to remind you, the Ultimate Draft Kit presale is going on right now. You can pick it up at the lowest possible price. And uh, if you pick up the UDK Plus at ultimatedraftkit.com, you get instant access to the Dynasty Pass. That means rookie and startup rankings, rookie mock drafts, Dynasty trade targets, the rookie production profiles, team opportunity pages, and so much more. We're going to have an update after this combine now. Uh, probably in the next week or two. So you can get in there, see what's in there right now. Another update coming through. And um, yeah, ultimatedraftkit.com if you want to check that out. Before said news, Mike, okay. Brooks needs us to answer a question. That don't impress me much. Am I wearing a fedora? What is yeah, happening? The video drops are, are... What is happening? I would go with regress. <laughs> but um, here's the quick question for the day, which is a regress or impress question. In 2022, Omari Cooper finished as the... 
wide receiver nine. Yeah. So that's a top it was ten. A great year. Top ten fantasy wide receiver for the second time in his eight year career. <laughs> Will he do it again? Will Amari Cooper do it again? So he has a problem. Uh with Does he have a problem? Well, I mean he Amari Cooper, for all of the things that like the ups and downs of his career, he has struck me as if you put if you put the sorting hat on, you would get Gryffindor for Amari Cooper. Okay, and why why is that? Because he is uh, at odds right now with the Dark Wizard himself. Okay, the, you went deep on the you, he, you tied it all together. Look, Jason's not here for the the nerds and their Harry Potter stuff. Right. So you uh, said you got tickets to the D and D movie. Is that right? Oh my gosh, you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Dungeons and Dragons movie is going to be sensational. Okay, go on. Uh, but back to the to the nerds, right? And and their love for Harry Potter. Look, uh, Deshaun Watson, aka Voldemort, aka he shall. Who not be? Uh, <laughs> wait, what is it? He who shall not be named. Yes, or played for fantasy football. Look, Deshaun Watson was awful. All uh, uh, one week, you had one good week of Amari Cooper with Deshaun Watson. All the other damage was weeks one through twelve. Watson came in weeks thirteen through eighteen, and in that time period, Cooper was averaging fifty nine yards a game. Uh. Or I I apologize, apologies. Uh, sixty-one yards a game, three, oh, okay, three and a half, three and a half catches, point three touchdowns per game, and was a top thirty wide receiver one time. He was a wide receiver three. It was a great game, but he, like, you're so we, does it all come down to yes. Deshaun Watson for oh, you? Yeah, one hundred percent. And what what I'm going to get to is, I think I think Deshaun Watson will improve, but. He looked like a guy who hadn't played football for a few years, and which was the case for him. So with a full off season and everything, with what Cleveland traded, you would hope, or they would hope that that Deshaun Watson will be better. But it is definitely not a guarantee that Watson is going to be a true franchise quarterback at this point. I'll go a less complicated approach to answering the question, okay? which is just the probability that Amari Cooper does not set another career high in touchdowns. Last year, the reason he's inside the top 10, just barely, nine touchdowns on the year, 132 targets, 78 receptions, not taking a thing away from him. But he snuck in with that touchdown total. Those things are pretty variable. Um, I do think Deshaun Watson will be fine. I think it'll be fine for fantasy players. And I, you know, maybe, you know, you're rooting against him. I don't know. I just think yeah. he'll be fine. I think he, he'll figure it out. And, um, you know, coming in in the middle of the season after that long of a break, very difficult to do. Amari Cooper will be a very relevant fantasy player, but I don't see top 10. So I guess that would be a regression. I think there'll be other wide receivers that have opportunities in this offense as well. You know, we saw nothing from David Bell last year. Uh, whether they invest in another draft pick. Sure. There there are too many things, I think, against his probability of hitting that mark. Now, a uh, friend of the show, Matthew Barry, had put out he like he he puts out an article kind of every year of like things that he's hearing at the at the NFL Combine. And one of these rumors and the whispers was the Cleveland Browns are going to continue to be very pass heavy, which like they were trying to let Watson be the guy, which uh, what Barry was pointing out in his article of there could be, there could be a limitation on uh, Sir Nicholas Chubb's rushing attempts, which would suck for fantasy football. Uh, so I mean, if if they're gonna really switch to that type of an offense, Amari Cooper should have the opportunity. He's still good. He's gonna be the wide receiver one for this team. But I'm with you that I would I would say regress. For Let's that. put this into the right context. Amari Cooper regression is based on his stat line. It's not necessarily based right. on his fantasy value where he's not being drafted as the wide receiver nine, which is where he finished. He's being drafted at 18 right now. So I'm happy with him there. Yeah, at ADP, I would love to have Amari Cooper. I think he'll, he'll continue to be, you know, he's the not the sexiest pick. Right. You associate the Browns with the running game. Deshaun Watson looked awful. Cooper's older. Um, there's a lot of things and reasons why you might be um, – kind of against him and that's probably why he'll stay around that ADP and I'm I'm fine with it there. Yeah. I don't all have right. a problem with it. All right, let's talk news. 
news and notes from around the league. All right, I want to start with the Lamar Jackson news. Good. Um, Lamar Jackson was tagged with the non-exclusive tag. This means that, uh, and what is it for, like $32 million, something like that, Kyle? I believe that's correct, yeah. So what this means is that he is a essentially a restricted free agent in the sense that teams can approach him, they can make an offer, a contract offer, to Lamar Jackson. The opportunity will be presented to Baltimore to match the offer. If they don't match the offer, they will receive two first-round draft picks. Correct. Did I miss anything in that structure? Just that he didn't go to the Falcons. <laughs> okay, yet. Well, yeah, we haven't got there yet. Um, so this is kind of – this is a wild situation. Yeah. Like, you have a 26-year-old quarterback that is a former MVP and represents himself, does not have an agent. You know, we saw what happened with Deshaun Watson's contract, the fully guaranteed money. The, fully, the guarantees are what are a sticking point in this deal. So let's discuss this because sure. this is not a normal situation to have a couple of uh, two things. One, a 26-year-old MVP available. Like right. right now, you can go sign him. The other part is the fully guaranteed side of this. Like if that is the only kind of contract he's looking for, thus far, it seems like teams are lining up to say they're not interested, which is the strangest thing ever if you have a chance to get a game-breaking, franchise-leading Locker room, you know, leader in Lamar Jackson. Uh, so I'll jump in and just yeah. for uh, one of the points that if you're not aware of this. So in the NFL, should Lamar Jackson be offered this fully guaranteed money? It means the owner of the team has to cut a gigantic check that's going to go sit in an escrow account and be available for Lamar Jackson. Yes, of, that's how like, guaranteed contracts work. So, if, number one, you have to have well, – and I know these these owners are, are billionaires and everything, but, you I mean, you got to cut a check for what $200 million or whatever uh, and, and have that sit in account, and you don't have access to that anymore. So that's a sticking point, which I can see where that's coming from. But the fact that – so you what you laid out, Andy, of like this, this is – insanity that a true franchise quarterback is there you just have to go and meet his financial demands right now and we're getting team after team after team at least allegedly saying they're out they're not even going to try and pursue Lamar Jackson either for the the reason of the the ownership can't cut that check to they maybe they don't want to put in the work because they believe that ball like all the work on that contract focused on that player when we're hitting free agency there's a bunch of other players that they got to focus on where perhaps Baltimore is just playing a game of fine go you do all the work write up that contract and we're just going to match it which I mean that'd be a win for Lamar Jackson but and, and then that's a huge loss of time and resources for these other teams yeah and there's there's so many facets to this one of them being proving to Lamar that maybe the market for a fully guaranteed deal well, doesn't exist. That's what Baltimore's trying they're, to do. That's what they're trying to do. And look, I'm not going to sit here and be the advocate for billionaire owners. Correct. However, Occam's razor says sometimes the simplest answer is the right one. And the simplest answer legitimately could be the Browns are stupid. Like the other, the other ownership groups can very easily look at saying you're paying Deshaun Watson what you did to get him is certifiably a stupid decision. He had the ability to do it. They did it. It's not how most of these teams might be able to function moving forward with the escrow, with the liquidity needed. Um, there is the possibility that the Browns owner Haslam, right, is just yep. uh, dumb. Yeah. And and Lamar, the, the only thing I will say is Lamar has been injured for two consecutive years. Yeah, so also that, true. That is a hard... Uh, pill, you know, Watson was missing time, not due to injury. Lamar's been injured for two years. Now you're like, give me $250 million with that injury. Um, there's a lot of things that factor in. Now the Falcons, Dolphins, Panthers, Commanders, and Raiders have reportedly said they're not pursuing Lamar Jackson. Three of those teams in the NFC. If Lamar goes to the NFC, there is a, there's a decent argument that he's the best NFC 
quarterback in the entire conference because Aaron Rodgers could be leaving. Yeah. I mean, uh, Jalen Hurts is in contention there, right? Matthew Stafford and, you know, there, there's not as many. Like they're all in the AFC. AFC. Yeah. And so you have this opportunity. That's why the Falcons, sorry, Kyle, the Panthers and the Commanders are teams that I'm like, how can you not? find it's, a way but maybe they know maybe they know that there is no wiggle room on fully guaranteed there maybe they know or maybe they're all the ownership has wink wink sent the message to each other of we need to shut this down immediately because they don't want to have to pay fully guaranteed contracts to these guys yeah and I, and, and it's possible i don't want to i don't want to say that that's not possible but i do know that human nature is like you know, you get if you get ten competitive people in a room together, and we all agree we're not going to eat the marshmallow on the table. It's like at some point in time, you're like, I'll be the sneaky one. Like you, that's your chance to beat them all. Yeah, so that's your chance to go beat them. Saying, so we still need some time for it to unfold. But for a team like Atlanta to not do this, like the trade compensation is two first round picks, and they're all like. It's very possible. I think they're they're at eight, right, Kyle? It's it's very possible that they want to take a quarterback at eight this year. In, so there's a, one of a, your picks. A, a, there's one of your picks. A totally unproven player. Yeah, you you have the the economics of it, and there you don't have to pay him a bunch. But that's one. So you're paying one extra first round pick to get a former MVP, proven franchise quarterback yeah, I mean, on your team. It is in sanity if these teams actually aren't going after Lamar. Fill, fill in the pick. Will Levis at eight. Right. Okay, Will Levis in a first for Lamar. <laughs> You're like, uh, yes, please. So, yeah, <laughs> like, it, the, the, it is the financial commitment. It's pants. certainly the commitment part. It's it's the contract deal. I'm sure that, you know, Baltimore wants him back. But this is going to come to a head. And, and the deadline right now for teams to make him an offer is Wednesday, March 15th at 4 p.m. Eastern. There you go. That's the lay of the land. It's going to be wild to watch. Other quarterback news. Geno Smith agreed to a three-year deal worth $75 million. Up to. He yeah. only he got he got $40 million guaranteed at signing, which we were we were just talking about Geno in the past episode of it would th another like it would be crazy if Geno's not a starting quarterback. So congratulations to to Mr. Smith there. Maybe could have got a little bit more money, but I mean he gets forty million. He gets there's incentives. Should he continue to play well, he'll get a whole bunch more money, and he's in a very good situation. Uh, it also keeps Seattle in contention for Anthony Richardson. Yes, it does. Uh, because he could he could sit, he could learn, and be the next man up in Seattle. And then Daniel Jones, Mike. Yep. He What's did. the latest on DJ? Uh, so latest four year, hundred sixty million dollar deal again. It was, I don't get caught up in totally in the numbers, but Daniel Jones will be the starting quarterback for the Giants for at least the next couple of years. They beat the buzzer, which means the two-for-one did happen. They didn't have to put the franchise tag on the quarterback. They immediately put it on to Saquon Barkley. So he will uh, Barkley will be back with the Giants as well. Is this going to be a contract that the Giants look back at with – with Daniel Jones? Yeah, is that going to be like like look at Tannehill's situation right now? That's kind of the one it reminds me of is like the Titans paid all this money for Tannehill. It looked kind of good for a little bit, but now the cap hit for Tannehill is a top five cap hit for two years, where he's not maybe the quarterback that you want. The Kyle pull up Tannehill's current contract situation, but I would I think it's like I, a thirty seven million dollar hit. I'm saying like can they cut him and things like that? I don't I don't recall the numbers, but. It, right now, sure, you can look at the Tannehill contract and say, well, moving forward, it's not great. But the Titans have had a very good run with Ryan Tannehill. I mean, they, they took their shot to try and win a Super Bowl, and they fell short, obviously, but they at least were they were in the running. They had a chance to, to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it was tough. It was a four-year, $118 million deal. What is this for Jones? Four years, 160 Yeah. Yeah, his his cap hit is uh thirty six million dollars this year. Tannehill or Tannehill? Okay. So I, I'm not saying it's not going to work out. I just think that there are you have to be a little bit like you're making a commitment to Daniel Jones, like he's your quarterback. Yeah. You're not you're not able to make a pivot here at least in the first couple of years, right? 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He'll. It's. He'll be the starter for at least a couple years. And I mean, thirty-two hundred yards, <laughs> only fifteen touchdowns, but five interceptions, and really, I mean, an additional seven hundred rushing yards and seven rushing touchdowns. But the the crew around Daniel Jones was a it was a skeleton crew. I mean, he there were truly no top tier passing weapons, and they Dable and Daniel Jones took this team from what they were last year, which was a steaming hot dumpster fire, got them into the playoffs. I mean, yeah, you, no, he credit. I mean, he he earned this money. It's it. For, he was on the precipice of backup for life, and yeah. now he just got a hundred sixty million dollar deal. So, like for for Giants fans who because. I, I, I've seen mixed emotions about it. You know, some are just furious that you gave Daniel Jones this money. Some are like, oh, no, I get it. I'm on the side of I get it. You have a quarterback who can help you win, and you can build around that player. And the, the leap that Daniel Jones took this year from his previous years, what if he what if he's even better next year? I know that's a that's a pretty big hypothetical statement, but they're, they're, he's on a trajectory now of, Maybe the Giants were right all along, and and Gettleman and and uh, Sir Claps a lot there were just absolutely destroying his career. And now you have good coaches around him. Yeah, do you want to explain who Sir Claps a lot? I can't is? even remember his name right now. Jason, Jason Garrett. 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 <clears throat> No. I just all I can see is I, the only thing I think of for Jason. Only Garrett on this show is, could we remember things like Guns Mahoney and Sir Claps a lot. First nickname of uh, the twenty twenty three season. The the videos of of Jason Garrett clapping and then the photo of him leaning out the train are just it's social media gold. Yeah, Sir Clapslot was not a <laughs> not a helper for Daniel Jones. Uh, no, it's a good point. I mean, it, I just told you the landscape of the NFC quarterbacks. There's not a lot of great ones. Yeah, it's either it's either do this, be in the race for a Super Bowl. I mean, you're not the favorite, but things can happen. Or Start it all over again. It's and I, I, most teams will be like, I want at least a chance. That's a good point. Yeah, being in the uh, the quarterback uh, tumult that like Indianapolis is in, Carolina, that's not a fun place to live. That's why I think it's so wild with what, what's going on with Baltimore. I and mean, I know it's. Yeah, because a, what? We, we didn't even. Let's circle back. Okay. Because why not? What if he leaves? Exactly. Have we not? I mean, it's almost exactly. like you forget that part of the equation if he leaves Baltimore is the I mean think about that division yeah I mean you what are they going to do a quarterback you 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 hope that Jimmy Garoppolo or someone could be wooed into like you go from oh please bring back Joe Flacco <laughs> you go from franchise quarterback to a bridge quarterback and that doesn't work uh one other bit of news I I want to mention that the Tea leaves are certainly pointing towards DeAndre Hopkins being moved by the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, yeah. I think it's a matter of, of when, not if. Uh, looks like it'll be a second rounder plus a player type of deal. And last I heard from some beat reporters, they were saying it's probably uh, New England. Or are you saying teams? Or I was trying to remember the timeline. I, I would have to look it up. Yeah, right now there is uh, talk that he'll be flexible with the last two years of his deal as well. Um, so, yeah. DeAndre Hopkins could have a new home. I've heard lots of different teams there. I mean, yeah. who wouldn't want him? He's one of the best true receivers in the league. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break and come back with the mailbag. All right, Mikey, it's time to get into these questions. Oh. I hope you got answers. It's mailbag time. Always. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh, yeah. Jay Grizz, big fan of oh, today's mailbag. Oh, I mean, J Jay Grizz is big supporter. Yeah, of the show? Yeah. In general. Yeah, mm -hmm. We give him a platform. He's a pretty good hype man. Uh, <laughs> so always there. He's, uh, he's always standing true. Yeah. So let's jump into the voicemails here. If you have a question for the show, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click that submit a question button. Or dial the voicemail hotline. That number is three zero two four six four TFFB. Let's start with the voicemail. Hey ballers, this is Cody over here in Dallas, Texas. I appreciate everything you guys do. Uh, I've got a question about Tua. Uh, what do you guys think about the injuries going into next year and, and his future with the Dolphins? I got him in a dynasty league as a QB two, and I don't know if I should ship him off or 
hold on to them and see if I can't make a three-peat uh, for the championship run. All thanks to you guys. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you. So, I, look, they're committed to Tua in Miami. That's step one. So I think as long as he's healthy, he's their quarterback. If he's their quarterback, he has Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell in an offensive mind that is able to put him in a position to succeed. Part two is will he stay healthy? Yeah. So, you know, it's a difficult decision because it's not, it's not the kind of decision that I like making is guessing whether or not a player gets hurt. Right, you can get burned both directions on that type of a guess. Do you have? Is his concussion situation, Mike, one that you are looking at with extreme fear? Uh, moving on in a dynasty league, like moving forward in a dynasty league. Yeah. If if I have Tua, I'm probably I'm probably holding on because the upside for fantasy football of Tua is is fantastic. You saw it in multiple weeks. You saw what he could be. Another year in the system, another full off season, ready to go. He could be great, but to have three concussions in the same season, and we we know of all the studies, it's kind of a, a snowball thing. Once you're once you've had some some bad concussions, your likelihood of another one it is elevated. Uh, we had a, a 2019 review showing. 3.76 times more likely. I mean, you, it's it it's incredible. He's going to have another one someday. He probably, if he's playing, he probably will. And it's just it's it's scary. It's dangerous. You've seen you've seen multiple careers cut extremely short from from concussions. So I mean, if I if I have him on my team, I'm going to hold on and better and have move. another planet quarterback. But yes, you do need to be. Uh, it would, you're, you're lucky that this is, this is a great year to try and get another quarterback on your team. There's, there's going to be, you know, I mean the, the, the two, what's the two great options, I believe. And then, you know, Richardson's worked his way in there. Can Levis be a good quarterback? I, I don't know, but he's going to go in the first round. Yeah. He's going to go in the first so round. So he's going to get a chance to become a good quarterback. It's, this is a good year to, to try and get some more of those guys on your team. Rob Main on Twitter, Mike, wants to know, can we explain how we are getting free agency news before the free agency period even begins? Um, because it technically begins next Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Sure. Uh, for players with expiring contracts. Now, you're going to have the legal tampering period before that. Um, Which news are we talking about? Oh, Derek Carr. Well, because Carr was... Uh, Carr was... I, I don't believe under the the rules of the new league year has to start because he got released. he got he got officially released that is right. by the team. So he's just he's just a guy. He's a dude. He's a free agent. So he can go do whatever he wants to do. And teams can sign guys off the street whenever they want to. Now the other guys, their contract hasn't told yet, but you get the expectations of of you know certain players are likely to be cut. There's the whole business of football of what day you actually cut that player that can affect your salary cap because maybe some of it gets pushed and then you know you can designate guys as we were going to cut this guy June 1st but we'll cut him now so that he can go try and get a new job uh but th that's that's the type of news we're getting right now you're not getting the the truly juicy stuff until the 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 wink legal tampering period begins that's right the very legal tampering period <laughs> Yeah, franchise tag deadline was Tuesday. Contract extension talks can happen. Um, Twitter question from Dylan. Does Calvin Ridley returning make guys like Christian Kirk and Zay Jones unstartable? What is the ceiling on all of those guys? Not I, not unstartable at all. No. no. First, let's make sure that Calvin Ridley can still play football. Probability is is good. Uh, I mean, but it's it's – been a while you know what are we like three years away from his the the true breakout campaign because you had the following year where he had he was dealing with mental health which calvin ridley put up a uh pretty sensational article talking about his personal struggles with anxiety and depression it's a very good read and uh, just you know trying to understand some of the humanity of these guys so uh, i think he'll be good but christian kirk is is a good player zay jones is the spot start like you you can't tell your fantasy football lineup that you're that you're playing Zay Jones you just have to you have to start him in a pinch 
Interesting, though, that second half of the season, Evan Ingram came alive. Yes. Um, yes, Mr. Franchise Tagged. He's Evan been Franchise Tagged. He'll, yes. he'll be back. Yes, he will. <laughs> okay, stop that. Um, it's just so exciting, man. Then the second half of last year, I brought it up on our 10 Things to Remember episode, but Christian Kirk ended the year poorly. Sure. Uh, the last eight games, he was on pace for about 1,000 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, because cause Schmevin was – taking everything this is my point so they, i i just i don't think that christian Kirk's going to end up unstartable but there is a world where evan ingram they continue to do what they were doing say jones is involved his involvement was was more over the second half and then calvin ridley makes an impact so like christian kirk's first half of last year you know might have been more of an anomaly of his time in jacksonville than maybe a prescription for the future what what do you think the true growth uh, for Trevor Lawrence could be in terms of a foot or two, like height wise. Or, I mean, he's already very tall. Right. He's a large fella at six six two twenty. But but for his speaking specifically to his production, <laughs> oh, at forty one hundred yards, twenty five touchdowns, forty five hundred and thirty. Can if, if and if Trevor Lawrence can get there, then no, these There's guys more not, room. These guys are not unstartable. They maybe you're not looking at anybody on that offense as a truly consistent wide receiver one type, but but you have a good quarterback who's getting better, and there's going to be enough to go around. Here's a fun fact. <laughs> Calvin Ridley, okay, wide receiver 20 in best ball. Christian Kirk, oh the, wide receiver, the wide receiver 24. <laughs> oh, now, man. Best ball. Thirsty. Thirsty for Calvin Ridley. Yeah, I think there's some thirst, but then you, you got to think that best ball psychology is coming into play here, right? I mean, Calvin Ridley's ceiling is probably higher than Christian Kirk's. Yes. You agree, Kyle? Sure, but that's way too high for me for a guy who hasn't oh, played I, in a year and a half. I mean, we don't even know if, if – is he an every-down player for them yet? Yeah, that, there's a lot TBD, but the the ceiling you're talking is 90 for nearly 1,400 yards and nine touchdowns. He was really good. He was so good back in 2020. That's a while ago. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's jump into another voicemail. What's up, Ballers? This is Chris from Charlotte. I was wanting to know where do you guys think DeAndre Hopkins is going to go slash where are some good situations for him, and what would you guys like to receive for the team back in compensation? Thank you. Multiple firsts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, what do we want the Cardinals to get back? Probably what they they paid. Wow. Oh, I guess they that only was, paid the second. Was, yeah, they, we traded a two and in, in a running back with a bad contract. That's true. The, the price was not a lot for Arizona, but the fact that you know, the Raiders had to pay what they did for Devontae Adams. That's what's frustrating. That's the hard part. But, look, DeAndre Hopkins at this stage in his career, what I want, Mike, and I don't know if it's the same for you, I want volume. I want him to be the guy. So, you know, there's talk about places like New England. He'd be the guy in New England. There's also places like Kansas City that have been rumored. You know, Kansas City would be a, a, an amazing opportunity for him. They don't have anybody of that caliber, but they also don't need to necessarily so, go spend the draft capital. And that's on it. it. It would be an interesting fit because Hopkins is a contested catch guy, and Kansas City's offense is let's we we scheme fast players to get open. Other than Travis Kelsey, who just people don't guard him. For I think reason. it would just take over kind of the um, juju possession. Uh, he could hundred plus reception type of guy. Are there other destinations that you can think of when it comes to? A good home for him. I mean, I'm trying to think of Baltimore, you but mean, but that know, situation is too up in the air. But I mean, places where it makes sense, Tennessee. So like the the Giants makes complete sense to me. Now that one is at the top of the list because you need a team that's going to compete. He's not going to want to go somewhere rebuilding like Tennessee. Yeah, it's, but I'm I'm you know I'm with you. What I'm looking for as a fantasy football fan is somewhere where he he where he he can truly be the number 1 because his play style is not gigantic plays anymore his play style is i am a ppr guy i am i'm always I'm, open i'm very reliable in the end zone but i'm not going to be ripping off jalen waddle 60 yard touchdowns at this point it's almost the transition that um larry that larry Fitzgerald yeah. made and the best destination for Hopkins is probably in Arizona. I mean, when he was healthy last year, he had quite the run. 
from week seven through week 12. I mean, he was on pace for 181 targets, 1,600 yards, almost nine touchdowns. But, like, I don't know if you can – He, I guess he wouldn't be the number one here, but if the Minnesota Vikings have to move on from Adam Thielen with that offense and, and Kirk Cousins, who is a very – he's adequate. He is a very adequate quarterback with him and Justin Jefferson. That is some massive touchdown upside. I saw a good friend of the show, Paul Charchian, put up a – Poll. <laughs> Did you see this? I I'm probably I just, Charch is is hilarious because he's always he's like he's like me where it's where it's Kirk Cousins is is way better than the than not than having, the Minnesota Vikings fans give him credit for. So his poll was to the Vikings fans, of course. He's up there in in Minnesota, and it was would you rather like pay for Lamar, extend Cousins, right, or tear it down or, and start over. Extend Cousins got the vote. Did it? Shocked me. Because I thought the sentiment what, what, around... What was burn it down at? Was it very close? No. No, it <laughs> okay, wasn't. Okay, that's good. I, I don't think it was that high. That's I should go good. look at it. Kyle, go go check the numbers. I want to know what the Minnesota fans are thinking about their quarterback. I mean, football fans, we're so quick to say, oh, tear it down, tear it down. When it's being torn down, it is the worst. It is the worst as a fan. You have, You know you have multiple years where your team is just going to be terrible. Yeah. Yeah, and we only get to live so many years, yeah, man. exactly. This is what makes me <laughs> laugh about how far the pendulum has swung on Kyler Murray, which, look, I, I'll look, agree. Look, tear it down. <laughs> oh, stop it. it. Stop. I, you know, you've got – go rank Kyler Murray in the, the NFC quarterbacks. He's, he's in the upper echelon. Yeah, he is. And so it's funny that, you know, you, you might be – yeah, extend Cousins 34%. <laughs> Okay, 30, See, 31%, 31% reboot the quarterback. My people. And then um, – <laughs> now, didn't Cousins have a pretty significant guarantee in his deal? Wasn't it all guaranteed? Yes, it yes. was all. But it wasn't the, it wasn't the money that Watson so of, got. I was going to say, of all the teams, you know, maybe that's Minnesota style. They can maybe. go get Jackson. Uh, yeah, 19% to Jackson. No respect. <laughs> Does have to stay healthy, though. All right, Instagram question from John. Uh, what is Chris Godwin's dynasty outlook? Just turned 27 under contract for two more years. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, you want to pass on that one? No, I mean, I won't pass because, look, in, in dynasty, you want players who are good. The, but I'm <laughs> Please saying, be that the end of your sentence. <laughs> I'm saying where you want to load up with players who are good, not just players who are in good situations because the situation, as you have seen, can go from uh, you went from Jameis and you're like, hey, that's pretty good. Tom Brady's here. It's pretty incredible. And now Tom Brady's retired and you're looking at the potential that it's Kyle Trask and you're just weeping it, just as quietly as you can into your shirt. But that could that could rapidly change. So Chris Godwin's very good. The second half of the year, he looked like he was starting to get it going from the ACL. Should be even better because he'll be more recovered this year. So I I think that Chris Godwin is still a uh let, a, a preferred wide receiver to have. Let on me team. let me ask you a couple questions that might answer the question. Cuz he he just turned questions to answer yeah, you, the question. You, you bet. What is this Jeopardy? You, yes, yes. What is? Uh no, he just turned 27. So you you figure his his prime windows till what? 29? Two more years. Okay. What odds do you give Tampa Bay to be a winning team over the next two years? Because we just talked about the things to remember show. Sure. 75% of the top 20 wide receivers come from winning teams. Now, maybe it's Trask, maybe it's not. But do you trust, like, you know, Bruce Arians is not there. Right. Uh, do you trust this organization without Brady to figure it out? Or are you betting on Godwin having to be in the 25% of, of that top 20 on a bad team? I mean, the nice thing – for their situation is Carolina needs to figure it out. The Saints need to figure it out. I mean, it's just like everybody in the division needs to figure it out. So, uh, so, so like you get you have multiple games against other low tier teams. So, I would I would still be betting on Chris Godwin. Like I'll I'll still have him as a as a top twenty four dynasty wide receiver. If you had to lock one into your lineup for the for the full season next year today. Like you got to it's a really weird league. They make you lock it in right now. It's like a best ball. Yeah, and you just lock it you got to have Mike Evans or Godwin for next year. Ooh. Who who are you slapping the lock on? Godwin. Okay. Taking the 
volume stability yeah. side. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, over the the fifty fifty ball. Over the one game, yeah, guy. <laughs> oh, um, but, hey, when the when the game shows up at the right time, you like that guy. YouTube question from uh, Tuckery Yarborough says, uh, "Which deucer is the deuciest?" Oh, I have not contemplated on this. Uh, let's let's slip over the there and deuciest? take a good. Let's take a good look because I mean. For those that you know aren't aware, I mean, deucer is, is supposed to be short for producer, right? And deuciest is a different category. Now, would you, if if someone is produciest, they're they're the most they're the smelliest fruit. producer. Oh, okay. that's what it would be to me. And uh, one of you definitely is. Did, did Jeremy just <laughs> volunteer? Yeah, <laughs> to I did. Be the deuciest. Yeah, he's the deuciest. <laughs> the birthday I mean, boy. That's thank, not thank something you, you're jealous of, is it, Brooks? Do, you don't seek the deuciest title. No, I don't want that title. Okay. You're the richest. All right. Um, Mike in Pennsylvania, would a league with six-point passing touchdowns sway where you would consider taking a quarterback and redraft? Nope. No? Nope. I mean, the, the scoring format just kind of changes a little bit who is at the top, and it, it doesn't. That's what it, it – not where you take it, but right. who you take. Yeah, it doesn't It doesn't change the, the supply and the demand issue. It just changes – who's scoring a little bit more points. All right. YouTube question from uh, Stephen Color 2010. We'll probably end it here. Uh, do you allow real world assets to be part of your trades in your <laughs> leagues? Uh, no. 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 This is what? like The I, idea of it is very funny. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think those jokes have happened over the years. I mean, like, J Jason's told the, the tale of he was in a league that transactions were, cost you money. Cost, you, like you put money into the kitty and – so so whoever wins you know the, the jackpot at the end is larger and then that would factor into trades because you could say let's do this trade i'm gonna cover i'm gonna cover what you would have i will to pay. cover your part of the transaction that's fine to try and help get it through yeah. but uh, i mean it's you're not like paying no this is not like i got your your car payment this yeah. month if you trade me like a caffrey <laughs> uh, that's not allowed so i mean for us, if you if that's your oh, way stop. of playing, no, 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 I'm outlawing. I'm outlawing that. Yeah, you can't you can't bribe and buy. That's collusion. If you're exchanging goods, if you're exchanging goods is and it? services to another person that's for their, collusion for their players, yeah, is it? Yeah, because it's not the the decision is not being made inside the best interest of the league or the teams is based on do I get money from you or something. But are my personal interests part of my team? No. No, you I person. run I manage and run my no, team. No, you, let me do, let me ask you a question, Mike. What if, what if my it, it, my power's going off? Yeah. Yeah. What the, if your power's going yeah, off? Yeah, then I, now I can't make transactions oh. anymore. Oh, I thought you meant like somebody cut your power in the trade. No, I or, mean like it's it's going off and you're going to take care of that bill this week. Yeah, or the he's an electrician. He's like I'll come fix I'll come <laughs> sure. fix this for you. Yeah, but I'm saying like there are practical issues with your power. Brooks. I need the internet. Brooks, will you trade me some of your dynasty players if I paint your house? No, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah I don't think this He's is a good way to go. That. All right. Well, we'll be back with another episode next week. Free agency is about to get going. A reminder, ultimatedraftkit.com. Pick it up for this year. You won't regret it. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.